All right, day three, unit five, honors geometry. Uh, we're gonna start right off with indirect measurement. And as we've talked about before, order matters in this unit with the similarity and the proportions. So let's just look at this question. It says a tree that's actually 3.4 meters tall casts a shadow that's 1.29 meters long. At the same time, there's a nearby tower and the tower casts a shadow that is 41.25 meters long. How tall is the actual tower? Okay, so if we want the real object over the shadow, for example, if we want to have that set up, uh, then you know, no problem. Let's take the uh, let's take the tree. Okay. So for the tree, the real tree is 3.4 meters tall, and the shadow of the tree is 1.29 meters tall. Okay, so now let's keep the order going. The real tower, okay, so this one here was the tree. Now we want the tower, okay? So the real tower, is what we want to find, okay? So we don't know the tower, I'll call it T. And it says that the tower casts a shadow, so the shadow is 41.25 meters long. Okay, so how would you go about answering this question? Somebody have a, an idea on what they would do to to solve for T here. It's not a new type of question. How do we solve for T in a proportion? Multiply 3.4 and 44.25. I think that's what you forgot. So cross multiply? Is mm -hmm. that what you want? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Cross multiply. So we're going to multiply the means, okay, the bottom left and the upper right. So that would be, I'm going to put it over here, 1.29t equals... And then what is three, whatever 3.4 times 41.25 is. Okay. And then finally, we're just going to divide by 1.29. Okay. So in your calculator, you can just go 3.4 times 41.25 divided by 1.29. And you find that T is approximately. Right. If I got my calculator tapping correct, I got 108.72093 on my calculator, but it does say to the nearest meter. So what's my answer? To the nearest meter. 109. 109. Ne nearest meter is the nearest whole whole unit or ones place. So you always look to the right. Well, that's bigger than four, so the eight becomes a nine. So I agree. Let's call that 109. And that is meters. Don't forget your labels. Okay. All right. So that one's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's something that we probably could have done just from previous stuff. Um, now, look at this next question. This one, we got a triangle and we got a parallel segment. Okay, now I kind of broke this down a little bit into a couple of questions that you should be able to answer. Okay, given JK is parallel to MN, all right, these are parallel segments. Right, and then they, they give us some other things. So 
when a segment intersects two sides of a triangle and is parallel to the third side, then two things are true, okay? First thing that's true is the two triangles that are formed, in this case, we got the big triangle LJK, that triangle and LMN are similar triangles. Obviously, they're not congruent. One of them's inside the other one, but they are similar. Now, if we remember uh, similar triangles, okay, similar triangles have angles that are congruent because similar means they're the same shape and the angles give them the shape. So if I say they have the same angles, my question to you is, how do you know that all the corresponding angles from the two triangles are congruent? So like on this, this the similarity statement would be triangle LMN is similar to triangle LJK. So that means all these corresponding angles got to be congruent. The, you know, the angle N in LMN, which is angle LNM, has got to be congruent to angle K, for example. How do I know those two angles are congruent based on the given information? Somebody know that? Think of unit two. Just like it says on the question there, based on unit two. They're parallel. The lines are parallel. Mm -hmm. And because the lines are parallel, what do I know? All right, because these are parallel lines. Uh, alternate interior angles. Close, that's close. Okay, mm -hmm. alternate interior would be this angle K and this angle over here. Exterior. Exterior, alternate exterior would be. When your pair corresponding angles. <laughs> <laughs> You're like vo a vocabulary soup here. Corresponding angles is the one. Okay. So, yeah. So if we have this, okay, yeah, angle N and angle K are corresponding angles. All right. So that's the reason. Okay. Why do you know that all the corresponding angles are congruent? Because these are corresponding angles based on uh, two parallel lines and a transversal. These are corresponding angles based on two parallel lines and a transversal. And what about the third angle? Somebody else wanted to tell me something obvious about the third angle in those two triangles that we're going to need when we do the proofs? I'm just writing while I'm waiting. A linear pair. Mm, what's a linear pair? To L and M is a linear pair to. How do I mean? I don't know. What I, so, what is the third angle in the two triangles? We've already looked at oh, the L. Blue. Yeah, yes. L. So how do I know that third angle is congruent to the third angle on the other triangle? Because? Yes. This triangle, you have a blue angle and a red angle and a third angle. And this triangle, you have a blue angle and a red angle and a third angle. How do I know that the two third angles are congruent, folks? So something that you did a lot back in unit three. Tell me about the third angle. Does it have a name? What's the name of that third angle? Ooh, somebody Isn't wants to come in. Congruent to JK. No, I don't know. <laughs> Hold on, I'm going to pause. So in LMN, we know the M angle and the N angle. What, what angle is remaining? Somebody. 
L. L. L, J, K. We know the J angle. We know the K angle. What angle is remaining? L. L. Is it the exact same angle, L? Yeah. Yeah. There's no other L. There's no other L. So how do I know that the third angle is congruent? Because it's the same angle. And what do we call that property when we say something is just congruent to itself? Reflective. Reflexive property. Good, good. Okay, now we're rolling a little bit. Okay, I get it. Monday morning, you know, I feel the same way. All right, so why are the two triangles similar? Well, we know immediately that they have the same angles. Um, and if all the angles are congruent, then you have to have the same shape, and that's what similar means, okay? Now the part where we're going to be able to answer the question. Number two down here. Okay, it says the segment splits the two sides that it intersects into proportional segments, okay? So we got this guy and this guy, and we got this guy and this guy, okay? It doesn't say that they're congruent. It says they're proportional. So that tells me that the ratio of the two black angles, the KN and the JM, okay? KN over JM is gonna be the same ratio as NL over ML. Okay? You can even write it like that. You can write KN over NL must equal uh, JM over ML, okay? So let's see what they gave us, okay? Because depending on whether they gave us the entire side or just the pieces, if they gave us the entire side, we're gonna take the, the fact that they're similar triangles. We're gonna make a proportion. If they just gave us the little pieces, then we're gonna take the fact that we have proportional pieces. Okay, so let's see what they gave us. They gave us LJ is 32. Oh, LJ is the big one here. They gave us LK is 40. Then they gave us LN is 25. So this right here. 25, I bet they want LM. Yep, they want LM. Okay, we can call that X. All right, so because the two triangles are similar, can somebody give me a proportion that I could set up? Fraction equals fraction, just like we did in this first equation up here. This is a proportion right here, but that's only using the little pieces. That's not using an entire side. We got to use the fact that we have similar triangles. Okay. So, can somebody tell me what the ratio or the proportion, the two ratios, would be? I'll start you off. 32 over what would you put here? There's actually two, two different answers that could be correct. 25. Did you say which one? 25. For Did you say 25? Because that's what NL is. That's, oh, you want L, NL? This guy here? Same thing. Okay. So where's the 32? 32 is on the left, mm -hmm. and it's the whole big triangle. Okay, now LN is a side of the little triangle, right? So when you put JK under 32, I'm confused. Did you say JK? <laughs> this guy down here? Uh -huh. Okay, I want to use, uh, because they're giving us sides that are on the left and the right, and they didn't give us the sides on the bottom, I'm gonna stay with the left and the right, okay? But if I say, what does 32 correspond to? 32 is in the big triangle. LX, 
LK. Yep. That's not an X. Okay, so LK is is uh, also on the uh, big triangle. But okay, so thirty two is on the left, and then forty is on the right. Okay, so I could do that. Sure, I could do thirty two, the big side on the left, over forty, the big side on the right. So that means we got to keep the order the same, left over right. So now we got to go with the little triangle. So if we do 32 over 40, what else are we going to have to do over here? X over 25. Over 25, yeah. Because left over right is what we did in the first ratio. So we've got to do left over right in the second ratio. Okay. Now it's just a nice little cross multiplication question like the one up top. Okay. There is another way that you could have set this one up. If you had wanted to do the 32 to begin, okay, 32 on the left is the big triangle. On the left, what is the small triangle side that corresponds to 32? Anybody? In the little triangle, what side corresponds to 32 from the big triangle? LM. Okay, which is X. Good. So if we did, and then on this one, we're going big triangle over little triangle. So that means on the other side, we got to go big over little. So the big would be 40, and the little on the right would be 25. Well, some people may go, well, those are different setups. Well, watch what happens when we cross multiply. What am I multiplying my X by if I cross multiply? 40. 40, okay. So I get 40X. Over here, what am I multiplying my X by if I cross multiply? 40. It's still 40. Okay. So check this out. On the other diagonal, it's 32 times 25. On this other diagonal, it's still 32 times 25. So as long as your order was consistent, if you decided to do uh, big over little on the right equals big over little on the left, or if you did left over right, over equals left over right. I mean, as long as you keep your order the same for both of your fractions, you're going to get the same cross products, which means you're going to get the same answer. Okay? So let's divide both sides by 40. Divide by 40 over here. Okay, so you get 32 times 25 uh, divided by 40. And let's see, I'm going to type that in 32 times. 2 times 25 divided by 40, and I get 20. Okay. 20 units. All right. And I always look back and say, does that make sense? Well, 20 corresponds to the 25, and 20 is smaller, just like the 32 corresponds to the 40, and the 32 is small. So yeah, I'd say 20 makes sense, right? Okay, so any questions about the setup, especially on this one? Okay, you probably want to refer back to your notes. Uh, this is one of those questions that year in and year out gives the regular geometry group quite um, a lot of problems, uh, just because sometimes it's, you know, a uh, little triangle over big triangle, and sometimes it's like this guy over here. It's just the pieces. Okay, but go back and, and look at, at this and then at, uh, you know, at what we did here. Okay, okay. You're, not, you're not saying anything, so we're going to go to the angle bisector theorem. Okay, so hopefully we all know what an angle bisector is. Okay, uh, angle bisector starts at a vertex, splits the opposite side into, well, what we learned was it splits that vertex into two separate angles that are congruent, and that's true. But now, that's what we got here and here. 
But now we have a little extra. Angle bisector is kind of special because it also splits the opposite side. Okay, so when it comes out, it splits this side here into two segments that are proportional to the lengths of the other two sides. Okay. So when it hits the opposite side, this side and this side have the same proportion as the two other sides of the big triangle. So in other words, the six over the four is the same ratio as, okay, so the six is on top, means the x is on top. So x over six, okay? So this six over four is equal to this x over six. And once again, we're gonna cross multiply and divide. Divide 36 by four and you get nine. If anybody has questions, make sure you shout them up here for me. Okay, so this other one here is the same exact idea. We have an angle bisector, which means that this side over this side is going to equal this side over that side. So hopefully you're saying, well, that's not bad. That's easy enough. So we got to have like, um, y over, oh wait, this thing. Well, there's nothing written there. This is the only difference in, in this one, right? Here's your challenge. What would you write here? What could I write here? Just remember, we can't do more than one variable at a time. So if we use a variable, it's got to be y. here to here. Hint, use the fact that we know this entire segment and use the fact that we have this segment. Six minus y. Bingo. Six, take away y. That's exactly what we're going to use for that. So we could set this up a few different ways. We could say y over six minus y equals, okay, now how would we set the other proportion, uh, the other side of the proportion up? Eight over four. Would it be eight over four? I think, no, no, four over eight. Four over eight, why did you change your mind? Em? Because you were being skeptical about my answer. Uh, I'm going to be skeptical whether it's right or not. I don't know. Order <laughs> matters. So if I'm going to describe y and, and 6 minus y, what am I going to call this as opposed to this? I might call it right and left. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the y is on the right and the 6 y minus y is on the left. Okay, so on the other one, I got to keep the order the same. What's on the right? Four. Four. And the eight's on the left. Okay. Keep your order. That's the main thing. Keep your order. If you switch your order up, you're going to get the wrong answers. Okay. Now, I want you guys to do this one out. Uh, just because I, I did look at uh, some of your practice um, assignments. I saw on Alex uh, which questions you were having trouble with. And the questions where we had a binomial like a six minus y in the denominator, that's, that's one that gave uh, some people some problems. So why don't you go right ahead, solve this one up, cross multiply, solve for y. I'm gonna give myself some room over here. I'm gonna give you a minute to go after that.
Okay, so you've all had a chance to, to do the question, right? Somebody want to tell me, you know, what they got for their answer, and we'll see how many people agree with them. Oh, come on, everyone said that they got it done. Somebody throw me an answer. Y equals 12. Okay, I hear 12. Do I have any agreement? I can't see any of you right now, so I just have to hear you. Does anybody have an answer other than 12? Four. Four? Two. I got what, was that? what was that last one I heard? Two. Two? Yeah, I got two. Okay. I got two as well. So we got, now, now that we've had somebody say two, now we got like three people with twos. Okay. So let's see. One of the people that said two, because I got three people that said it. You want to uh, just tell us what you did with your cross multiplication? I guess. Good. Go um, for it. So I multiplied six well i cross multiplied okay so six minus y times what four four equals eight y eight times y okay now what i bet if somebody missed it this is where they missed it i distributed the four that's a good thing so six minus y which means two terms times the four so you got to multiply both terms times times four and then I plus four on both sides to cancel it out. Okay. So now you got plus four Y plus four Y. That's nice. So you got 24 equals 12 Y. Good. And then I divided by 12. Divided by 12. That looks good. Y equals two. They might disagree with that now. Okay. So for the, the people that got other than two, was it just uh, distribution or did you, I'm not sure what you did. Did you cross multiply the wrong numbers? What happened? I got the right answer, but I just forgot to actually write out the final answer. So right. I had 12 Y equals 24, but I forgot to actually write Y equals two. Oh. Oh, and, you know, another thing people will do, sometimes they just out of the blue will subtract instead of divide. It's amazing how, how often that happens, but it's very common. It really is. But, yeah, so that's how we're going to get our two. Okay, so let's continue on. Uh, triangle similarity postulates. Okay, now do you remember the triangle congruence postulates? Can you name them? I'll name one of them. Side, side, side congruence postulate. Do you remember another one? Angle, side, angle. Angle, side, angle. That's two. Angle, angle, side. Angle, angle, side. That's three. The HLC. HL. Hypotenuse leg. There was one more. Side, angle, side. Side, angle, side. Okay. We had five of them that we looked at. For similarity, there's only going to be three. Okay. Only three. The first one is angle, angle. Angle, angle, similarity. So if I know that two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then I know that the triangles have got to be similar. Okay? Well, think about it. If I know that one triangle has a 30 and a 50, and the other triangle has a 30 and the 50, then that means the third angles have got to be congruent. And you know, now let's get to our law of syllogism. If two angles are congruent, then the third angle is congruent. If all three angles are congruent, then they have the same shape. If two triangles have the same shape, then they are similar. Okay, so angle angle basically is saying if two angles are congruent to two other angles in the other triangle, then we got similar triangles, right? Second one, definition, one of the definitions of similar triangles, not only all angles are congruent, but all sides 
are proportional. So there is a side, side, side similarity. So if the ratio of all corresponding sides is the same, then you have side, 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 okay? And then there's one more, okay? This one is SAS, okay? Now, unlike congruent properties, postulates, these S's don't mean that the sides are congruent. It just means that the sides have the same ratio as the other sides. So like this pair of sides, like the first triangle, second triangle, are in the ratio of one to two. So that means that these other two sides have to be one to two. Okay. So corresponding angles must be congruent. Corresponding sides are proportional. And therefore, they have the same ratio, which if we're talking about congruent or excuse me, similar polygons, we call that ratio the scale factor. Okay. So now we're going to do a few proofs, just a couple actually. And these proofs are going to be easier than the congruence proofs because you have less to, less to prove and uh, basically, uh, you know, we're going to have less givens. I'm not going to have CPCTCs because C is standing for congruent at the end. We don't care about the things that are congruent. Uh, yeah, let's just look at this one here. Uh, given the ratio of SR to VR is the same ratio as TR to UR. Okay, so those are given. So SR, I'm going to go color code SR to VR is the same ratio as TR to UR. Okay, so those two pairs of sides in different triangles are similar or they are uh, proportional, right? Now I want to prove that these triangles are similar. Out of these options for triangle similarity, I can't use angle angle because they've, we're talking about sides here. We've already done sides. Side, side, side would be cool if I could figure out a way to say that this side over this side is the same ratio as these guys. However, there's no marking and there's no extra given, okay? I've already used the given for sides and angles. That's what the S's and A's stands for, okay? So now I need to look at my picture for the other info. Well, SAS would be cool if I knew that the angle between the two sides was congruent to the other angle between the two sides. Okay, you got to know why. Somebody tell me why I can make angle marks there based on the picture. Because of the order in the given. The order of the given. Oh, like, because you given. what order matters, like the right to left. Okay, so what does that tell me though? That just tells me that, you know, this yeah. over this is equal to this over this. Well, we don't want the angles, right? Well, now I, wa I want to get SAS. I want that angle. Oh. If I'm looking at this picture. What do you see in this picture? That we've, vertical angles. Yes, we see vertical angles. This angle is going to be congruent to this angle because they're vertical angles. So that will give me SAS. That will give me SAS, similarity. Okay, so I'm going to say that angle, uh, let's see, this guy here, let's name him uh, TRS. Angle TRS is congruent to angle, let's name this guy, URV. 
URV. Okay. Reason. Vertical angles are always congruent. Okay. So now that we've got those markings, we're done. We can prove that triangle RST is similar to triangle RVU, and the reason is the side angle side similarity posture. Okay. So anytime we have triangles similar, the reason is always going to be one of these three similarity postulates. It's either angle angle, side side side, or side angle side. That's it. Okay, questions on these? The proof is short, but you know, don't get too hung up on the congruence stuff because congruence was unit three. This is similarity. The only things that are congruent in similar triangles or similar polygons are the angles. Otherwise, you've got a scale factor for the sides. Okay? And you can actually just write it like this. I gave you another proof so we could practice one more. Just a little bit different on the setup. Okay? This one, it says the given is that angle ACB is congruent to angle EDB. Okay? And it's given. So these are angles. ACB is this guy right here. That one is congruent to ED, uh, yeah, EDB, which is this guy right here. So this angle. So these are congruent. Okay. Can somebody give me a second? angle so that I could just go with this angle and then one other angle. What angle do you think we can work with right now? A. Why A? Because it's like a cross, I don't know. Okay, but remember we got to look at the two triangles. Oh, then B. B. Why are you saying B? Because it's part of both of them? Yeah, B is actually in both triangles. So I'm just gonna say angle B is congruent to angle B. Why can I say that, folks? Someone's gotta have that one. Because it's in both triangles, the reflective property. Reflexive property, sure. The reflexive property. And, and so now guess what? In both triangles, we have two angles congruent to two other angles. So that means I can go straight to the proving the triangles are similar. Triangle ABC is similar to triangle EBD. And the reason is the angle-angle similarity postulate. Okay, easy peasy. Okay, discussion, questions, comments, fears, dreams, hopes, ambitions. You can dream it, you can do it. Anybody have anything to say about this one? Okay. All right. So now we're going to make sure that the order matters again in our similarity statements. Okay. So it says decide whether the triangles are similar, and then if they are, write the similarity statement, and then state the reason. The reason that justifies similarity is always either gonna be angle angle, or side angle side, or side side side. That's what the drop down menu on Alex is gonna give you for options, right? So first, are they similar? Okay, and you're gonna use these three criteria to see if one of them works. If they are similar, then we're gonna make sure the order is good. Okay, so is this a picture of two similar triangles? What have they given us thus far for Givens. 
The right angles. Okay, they gave you right angles. So they're congruent. So those ang those two angles are congruent, okay? Mm -hmm. But that's only one angle in each. Of vertical angles. <gasps> there are vertical angles in this picture. Yeah, so now I've got two angles in each triangle. So I'm gonna say they are similar. And I know it's gonna be by the angle angle similarity postulate. Now we just have to figure out how to name the second triangle. It says the first triangle is X, Y, Z in that order. So M and Z. So corresponding angle to X would be M. Corresponding angle to Y, since Y is the right angle, would be N. And corresponding angle to the middle guy would be the other middle guy. So I agree with MNZ. Okay, that good? We like that, I hope. Okay. Now, hopefully you could look at that and say, well, they didn't give us any sides. So that had to be angle angle if it was ever gonna be anything. What are you gonna say about the middle one? Could this be angle angle, folks? No. No. I only got one person out there today. Come on, I got like 10 of you. Why can I say this is not going to be angle angle? Because they don't have any congruent angles. No, I still only have one person. Yeah, there's no angles marked. There's no vertical angles. There's no shared angles. So if this is going to be anything, it's going to be side, side, side. Now we have to see if it really is side, side, side. So here's a hint. The order matters and smallest over the smallest is going to be the same ratio as the biggest over the biggest and the middle over the middle. So let's try it. The smallest side in this triangle is a six. The smallest side in this triangle is a three. That's a two to one ratio. So the biggest side is a 12. The smallest side is a six. Is that a two to one ratio? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Ooh, different voice, good. Okay, the middle sides, eight, four. Is that a two to one ratio? Yes. Yes, okay. So because they are all the same ratio, then I know that it's gonna be the side, side, side similarity postulate. I just have to make sure that my order is good. So AB is the eight. That's the middle side. My middle side over here is the four. So I know it's either gonna be DF or FD, okay? So then I look at BC. BC is the second and third. BC is the smallest side. Smallest side is three, so it's gonna be DE, okay? So that means that FD is gonna be my first two letters, but DE is gonna be my last two letters. It means that it's gotta be FDE. Oops, triangle's already drawn there, FDE. Okay. All right, what about this last one? What are we gonna to use to investigate whether these are similar triangles or not? Am I gonna use angle, 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 uh, excuse me, angle, angle, side, 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 or side, angle, side? Come on, stop eating breakfast for a second and start chiming in. I've only got like three of you that I'm hearing voices. Side, angle, side. Side, angle, side, okay. Because we've got two sides and an included angle. Two sides and an included angle in both of these. Mm -hmm. 
I have one of my Algebra 2 people coming in. Let's don't scare her too much, okay? So looking at my side angle side as my possibility, we have to see if they really are similar. By the way, the other one here was similar. Okay? I don't think they are. You think they are? Tell me I why. I don't think they are. Oh, you don't think they are? Mm -hmm. Tell me why. Because the eight can't go into the 10, like equally. Like, because it's 10 and 25 and then 20 and eight, like. Okay, are. so out of the SAS, all right, we know that the angles are congruent because they got the markings. So the smaller of the two sides for here is gonna be the eight. The smaller of the two sides for here is gonna be the 10. So eight over 10 and that reduces down to four fifths. So then the bigger side is 20 and the bigger side is 25. Okay. Well, what does that reduce to? Four or five. It, yeah, the same thing, right? So that means there's the same proportion, okay? The same ratio, which means they're proportional and they have the same scale factor. So that means, yes, they are similar and it is by the side angle side similarity postulate. So now let's just look at the order. STU, okay, STU, uh, let's see. So S to T, that's gonna correspond to R to Q, right? So we're gonna call that RQP. Okay. So S didn't have any angle mark at all. T had the one angle mark, and they went down the smaller of the two sides in the SAS. Okay, so that's how I figured RQP. All righty. All right. I think we're just about there, aren't we? Yeah, okay. These are all quick. That's why I said we're just about there. So if you remember order matters, then these ones are going to be the simple ones. We've done the hard stuff, even though it's not that hard for you. Okay. Check this out. Find the scale factor. So if you can read, this is going to be the easiest one. The model to the real bridge. Now they gave you six numbers. You don't need them. You just need one pair. I could use model real bridge here. Model over real bridge is one to four. I could have used model over real bridge, one to four, or I could have used model over real bridge, one to four. Okay, either way it's gonna be one to four. Keep the order, as long as your order is good, you're gonna be good, okay? All right, order on this one. One inch to six feet. I think I scared my algebra two kid. All right, no problem, she'll be back. So the height of the house is five inches. So the inches go on top, we want the real house, so we want x feet. So I cross multiply, I get x times one equals five times six, okay? And this is feet. Same thing, one inch, six feet. The length of the house, that's the real one, is 42 feet. So just make sure that feet is in the denominator, feet is in the denominator, all right? So now we can put uh, we can put an x in for for our inches here. Cross multiply, we get six x. Cross multiply, we get forty two. X is seven, and that's inches. Okay, cool beans. Okay, flip and fly here. To finish this up, I gave you a helpful hint. Okay, and it is helpful. Check this out. Get the actual dimensions of this guy. If this is two meters for each of these little squares, then this is actually two, four, six meters by two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 meters, okay? So if this is six meters by 18 meters, yeah, algebra two folks, hold on, I'm almost to you, okay? Um, if this is six meters by 18 meters, how are you going to draw yours? Well, if each one of these is worth six, there's my six. 
And my 18, one, two, three, boom. Okay, so this is six by 18. Done, that's it for that one. Last question, okay. Two centimeters represents three meters. Again, order matters. I want the real patio. Here is your fake patio, right? So four centimeters by two centimeters. I wanna know what that four centimeters is. So four centimeters gives me how many real meters? Well, hopefully you can see that that's six, okay? So that's six meters on this side. And then we already said two centimeters is three meters. So we got six, uh, six meters by three meters, and they wanna know the area. Okay, six meters times three meters, six times three is 18, meters times meters is meters squared. We are done. Okay, geometry folks, if you have any quick questions, shoot them at me. Otherwise, I'm gonna end this recording, and hopefully that will help you on your homework.